I'll just have to get along with it. I'm learning something new at school, and I'll just have to get along with it. When I was a small child, I hated writing, and I hated reading, and I didn't want to do either of them. When it came to spelling, I was horrendous. At the spelling age of a two-year-old by the time I was ten. I had all of those funny mistakes. How do you think I spelt the word right? Was it an R? There was no R in the word at all. <laughs> I had my own unique way of getting around these things. Ignore them. Just get along with it. But I did have reading in a form that wasn't recognized at the time. Every night before I went to sleep, I'd close my eyes and I'd have a book playing on a CD in a cassette player. And I would drift off to sleep with stories of pirates, stories of fairy tales, castles, dungeons, dragons, whatever it may be. Some true, some not. And I was happy with that until they really started making a big deal of this whole writing thing at school. You had to figure out how to read and write? Okay, well, I'll figure it out. At about age eight, I got a reading tutor. It was supposed to be a spelling tutor, but reading was the only thing I cared about. See, I could read the stories instead of just listening to them, and that was wonderful. I could get some of the stories without having to make a big loud noise and have earphones in or annoy all the people around me. And I thought, oh, this is strange, having silent stories. So I got along with it. I learned how to read, I learned how to write, but it wasn't fun. I wasn't enjoying myself at all, and I still had all my audiobooks. Even now, on my phone, I have over 60 audiobooks, some of them running up to 60 hours each. Plenty of reading for me if I ever get stuck on a bus or a plane or a train, and I was for many years on a bus and a train, every day for hours on end. And I was content. It was okay. I didn't need to text anyone. Just call them. I didn't need to write any lists down. Other people do that. I skipped all chances at, at writing if I could avoid it. I didn't take any essay subjects in school. I took physics, chemistry, mathematics, and that was it. Don't ask me about anything else. But that doesn't really work so much. I mean, you can get by on anything, really. But I wanted more. And recently, someone gave me a book. Well, they told me to read a book. And I said, I'll get the audiobook. And they said, you can't get the audiobook. You've got to get the real thing. I said, what bollocks is this? <laughs> I told them, I have over 60 books on my phone right here. I've listened to all of them. Some of them are very long. I don't mind. He said, no, you've got to get the physical book. Some people here may have heard of it. It's called House of Leaves. It's a thick, heavy tome. When you scroll to the back, there's probably about 50 pages of appendix just listing every time certain words have been used throughout the book. I was like, oh, this is a nightmare. I remember just getting along with it with Lord of the Rings, and that had a thick appendix at the back as well. Not fun. So I decided, okay, I'll buy this book and I'll give it a chance. And it changed my perspective on text as a format. See, with audiobooks, I felt very pleasured. I felt very privileged to have really good narrators. We had narrators that sounded like they should be doing the voiceovers for Hollywood films. Everything was dramatic, and he was hanging onto the cliff edge. And I can't skip ahead and immediately read to see if he was saved, because I have to wait for the narrator to whisper. And then he found a branch and pulled himself back up. It was wonderful. I love the suspense. It's just like why I didn't like writing down my stories. I like telling them so I could see everyone's lovely faces reacting to the drama, the suspense. So I was thought to myself, how could this physical book Come close. Wow. As I started reading it, it was horrible. It was a textbook. It was written in the form of a textbook, but it was supposed to be some sort of story, right? And as I read through it, it was talking about referring to other authors and having citations and all of this 
rubbish. But then it started to get good. Why is that word a different color? That's strange. Why is the words written sideways along the page? And, oh, he's coming up to the cliff and I'll just skip ahead to see how he does. Every page only has one word on it. I can't just jump all the way to the end and see what happens. I have to at least kind of pay attention to what I'm doing with the pages, and as I turn them, I feel something, like I'm listening to an audiobook. And this is when I discovered text can be a beautiful medium. In that story, there are several sections where words would be misspelled. And I thought, great, I love that. And as I read them, they have a different sound to them. You can hear the lisp in the character. You can tell that they're missing teeth just by how the words are written on the page. Wonderful. But it's only one book, right? Not quite true. I have noticed that there are other places where such interesting text medium comes up. If you've ever gone onto a message board on the internet, or someone sent you a funny text message where they've used capital letters and they've jumbled all the words around and they've made some sort of picture there with all the letters, that is where they inspired me. I love that. And I found more and more things as I dig deep into it. Finding the joy of stories in the text medium, not just locally. The last thing I'd like to leave you with is I found this wonderful little language. It's called English. That's just English with an A. So what's the deal? Well, it's English but without any of the extra languages that came along later on. It doesn't have any of the French or the Latin or all those funnily spelt words in it. It's all nice and simple words, and the longer words are just simple words strung together. I find it is very interesting to read. It provides a different perspective, because a lot of those words are already in English. They just don't get used as much. And reading through a document that's written like that and comparing it to the English one, I think, Man, can't we have some fun with words? <laughs> so, I think I've learned a little more than just getting along with it. I think I've learned the joy of stories. Thank you.